G'day, Starlo here. Welcome to this New South Wales DPI Fisheries Family Fishing How-To Special. The whole purpose of this clip is to give you some basic information so that you can go out and enjoy this year's Gone Fishing Day, which is on Sunday, the 18th of October. Unfortunately, because of safety considerations associated with the COVID pandemic, we can't bring you all our usual live activities on Gone Fishing Day this year. Hopefully they'll be back bigger and better next year. But meanwhile, via social media, we're still able to come to you and share with you tips and hints that'll help you have a fantastic day on Sunday and go fishing with your family and friends. <laughs> so there's no excuse not to get out there and wet a line. Of course, while you're doing that, it's really important to fish safely and responsibly and to practice social distancing while you're out on the water. We've got a couple of short clips coming up showing you the absolute basics of how to catch fish in both fresh and salt water. And I'm going to show you how you can win some fantastic prizes, including lure packs, and rod and reel outfits. But first, a short message from the Minister for Agriculture in New South Wales, Adam Marshall, about the importance of fishing in this state. Over to you, Minister. Thanks, Steve. G'day, everyone. Uh, on behalf of the New South Wales Government, it's my pleasure to wish you all uh, a great day this Sunday for Gorn Fishing Day 2020. As we know, it's been a pretty challenging year with COVID and everything else, uh, but with a lot of the restrictions easing, it's great uh, to be able to get out and about, drop a line in and just enjoy uh, one of Australia's favourite pastimes. There's over a million wreck fishers in New South Wales and it's an industry that's worth around $3.4 billion to our state's economy. Uh, myself and other members of the New South Wales government, we're always looking for opportunities to not only uh, increase recreational fishing opportunities, to increase fish stocks, uh, but also to provide uh, more educational programs to get more people uh, hooked on recreational fishing and involved not only in a sport but in a wonderful pastime. I want to thank uh, our experts, uh, Steve Starling and Al McGlashan. These two are some of the best in the business and uh, we're very proud as Department of Primary Industries and the government to be working with them uh, to bring you this video online series. I hope you enjoy it, I hope you learn something from it, but most importantly I hope you continue to participate in fishing, uh, continue to enjoy uh, and continue to get more people involved. Enjoy the weekend. Thanks Minister and it's great to see the New South Wales government being so supportive of recreational fishing in this state. Okay, let's get down to business now. And my first and most important tip to you is to head down to your local tackle shop before you go fishing. The people who work in these outlets will have heaps of great advice, as well as any extra gear and bait that you'll need on Gone Fishing Day. So do what I do and shop locally. All right, it's time to get down to business. I'm going to take you to a freshwater lake now. We're going to chase some yellow belly or golden perch on bait. But the tips that I'm going to give you are just as applicable to any other freshwater species, including trout. So watch carefully. Well, g'day, here I am again. And as you can see, I've changed locations. I'm now on the shore of a dam or impoundment in central western New South Wales, freshwater. And what I'm hoping to catch here is a golden perch or yellow belly. These are a fantastic Australian native fish, the second largest of our inland natives after the Murray Cod. They occur naturally in many of the inland rivers, but they've also been stocked by New South Wales DPI fisheries into many of these man-made lakes and also into a few rivers where their populations have needed a top up. And to further protect these fish, New South Wales DPI fisheries have got a bag and size limit on golden perch or yellow belly in New South Wales waters. And you need to listen to this bit carefully because this is how you're potentially going to win one of those prizes that I keep talking about. You'll need to know the bag and size limit. Now the bag limit for golden perch or yellow belly in New South Wales is five fish per angler per day and each one of those fish has to be over 30 centimetres in length. So just to repeat those important statistics, the bag limit is five per angler per day and the minimum legal length is 30 centimetres. Remember that or better still, write it down. One of the great things about golden perch or yellow belly is that you can catch them on bait, on lures, and even on flies. 
speaking of flies, there's a few around here today. <laughs> but today, look, I'm keeping it nice and simple. I'm going to chase them on bait. And the outfit I'm using is a single-handed spin rod. It's about two meters long, nice light tip. I've got a 1,000 to 2,500 size reel on it. And I'm spooled up with four kilo line. I'm using braid, but you can use monofilament, either nylon or fluorocarbon, they're all fine. Keep it simple, and remember, if you go into your local tackle shop, the folks there will help you to make all these decisions and make sure you've got the right gear for the job at hand. Normally I'd use a simple running sinker rig with the sinker running down to a swivel and then about 30 or 40 centimetres of line to my hook for targeting these yellow belly. But today I'm in quite shallow water here on the edge and it's quite weedy. This dam has risen slightly in recent times because of rain and I figure the fish might be sniffing around up on the edges looking for some food. So I'm actually going to fish without a sinker. All I've done is tie a 1-0 inline circle hook to the end of my leader and I'm going to load that up with some earthworms and flick them out here. That doesn't provide me with much casting weight but I don't need to cast very far either. Just flick it out and 5, 10, 15 metres will be plenty and if you needed a little bit of weight you could add a split shot or a small sinker but I'm going to see if I can get away with no sinker at all. That's a great way to fish. Now the reason I've chosen this inline circle hook is that these hooks are particularly kind to the fish. They nearly always hook them in the corner of the jaw. And that's really important if we're going to choose to let some of the fish that we catch go. There are all sorts of baits you can use for freshwater fish such as golden perch. Yabbies or freshwater crayfish and shrimps are both great baits. But you know what? So is the humble earthworm you can dig up from your garden. And that's what I'm using today. I just lightly pin a couple of these squirming worms on my circle hook, leaving plenty of dangling ends to attract a hungry fish. It's really important not to clog your hook up with too much bait, especially using these circle hooks. Now I've picked a bit of bank that's fairly close to both some submerged timber and weed beds. That's exactly the sort of real estate yellow belly love. A short cast is all it takes, not too much oomph because you don't want the worms to fly off your hook. Let the baited rig sink to the bottom, engage the reel, pick up most of the slack and wait. It could take minutes or it might be hours. You could prop your rod up on a stick and sit back, but I like to stay in touch with what's going on. While I'm waiting, a reminder about those rules and regs that you'll need to know to have a chance of winning a prize. Remember, the daily bag limit for yellow belly is 5 fish per angler and the minimum legal length is 30 centimetres. Now I reckon I just had a bit of a nibble, but the most important thing with these circle hooks is not to strike. Just let the fish move away with the bait. Okay, the line's tightening up now. Just let the weight come on and load up. <laughs> and I've got him. Oh, it's not a bad fish either. Oh, just take your time really important oh, just to let your rod do its work and soak up the lunges. I've got a bit of weed on the line too. Oh, he's not a bad fish. Not a bad fish at all. Oh. Landing net would be handy here, but I'm actually just going to put my hand under the fish and lift it out. Oh, or I can even get it. A jaw grip. There we go. Oh. <laughs> That's a beautiful yellow belly. That was what I was after. And he's hooked exactly as they're supposed to be with these circle hooks, right in the corner of the jaw. It's really important to handle these fish well. They've got no teeth, so you can put your thumb in their mouth like that, but support their body weight underneath. That's a gorgeous golden perch or yellow belly. He'd be a good one to keep and eat, but I'm actually going to let this one go. So. What I'm going to do is just twist that hook out. I've got my pliers here in my pocket. That'll actually help. And there we go. Hook's out. <sighs> what a lovely fish. I'm going to pop this one back in the water and see if I can get one slightly smaller, believe it or not. The smaller they are out of these dams, the better they tend to eat. So I'm going to look for one in that sort of 35 to 40 centimetre range. This bloke's probably at least 45 centimetres. <sighs> Great fun. <laughs> I'll get it back in the water. 
Right, mate. Oh. It's important just to swim them, make sure they've got their strength back. No, oh, yeah, he's he's fine. <laughs> All right, let's see if I can catch a smaller one. Now, while I see if I can find a slightly smaller yellow belly for my dinner, let's catch up with well-known angler and photographer Alma Glashen for some tips on fishing in our saltwater estuaries. Over to you, Al. G'day guys and welcome to Sydney Harbour. Now, Sydney Harbour is home to 600 species of fish, but we're gonna chase two of the most popular and easiest catch, which are brim and flathead, your bread and butter species. And the great thing is, they're accessible right up and down the coast, and you can catch them even from the shore. But what we're gonna do is show you a few tips and techniques to help you catch a few fish and make it really basic. That's the important part. So you can nick down straight after school, catch a few fish. The great thing about fishing in New South Wales is the multitude of species you can catch. You've got brim and flathead, which are really easy in here. You've got salmon, you've got kingfish, you can even catch squid. There's everything. There's an amazing variety of fish there. In fact, even in Sydney Harbour, there are more than 600 species alone, which to put in that context is more than the whole of Northern Europe. But what we're gonna show you is a few little tricks that'll help you catch a fish right here and do it off the bank. So you don't need a boat, you don't need to spend a lot of money, but there's a couple of tips that I reckon will help you catch a few fish. From me, not him. <laughs> when it comes to tackle, this is the part that confuses everyone because you've got so many different styles of hooks, sinkers, so many different rods and reels, isn't there? So many different, uh, you know. It's confusing, things. isn't it? But what we're gonna do is make it simple for you. So we've got here, Coops. We've got, we've got a simple 1,000 size reel and a two to four kilo rod. Not too expensive, light, put up, you know, yeah. makes the fish put up a good fight, so. Realistically, you could spend $100 and you're in, you're pretty much in the running, aren't you? Yeah. Now, terminal end. If you're bait fishing, you've got to have your little circle hooks. They're absolutely dynamite. They're better for the fish and they're easy to hook up. And we're going to show you how to use them because there's a little trick to it, but it's better all around. And of course, a mix of sinkers, swivels, hooks. Go into your local tackle shop, speak to the guys. Not only will you find out some of the areas you can do it, like the hot spots, but you'll also get, you know, the right size hook for the right fish. Because in different areas, you're gonna use different hooks, different sinkers, different rigs. That local advice is imperative. Mm. Of course, don't forget your leader. In this case, 15 pound is perfect for brim and flatties and all those bread and butter species. So when it comes to your rig, let's keep it simple. Thanks, Coops. Let's show it off there. So we've got, at the business end, a little size, size one circle hook. Nice and simple. You've got probably a couple of foot, a couple of foot of 15 pound litre, a small swivel, and a small bean sinker. And as you can see, the bean sinker is running up and down there, so it's free swimming. For the weird style, it's actually really good and really easy to hook up with a non-offset circle. It's really important that it's non-offset because if it's non-offset, it'll hook them in the mouth and that's much better for release and it's a much better hookup rate. Now, it's time to catch a fish. Oh wait, oh, yeah. we've got to bait up. We've got to bait up first, oh, don't yeah. we? We've got to do that, don't we? <laughs> One thing that's critical is structure. Now, a lot of people don't realise you don't just go fishing and cast in. Fish are very, like flathead use the sand, they hide in it, they sit on the edges. The ambush hunters, brim, are sitting around marinas and they like that vertical structure. So when you go fishing, particularly in places like Sydney, you know, Sydney Harbour's a real hard one because there's so many places you're not allowed to fish. So you don't just walk down and fish, you've got to be conscious of other people there. You've got to look at it, you've got to find, the sand flats are really good for the flathead, but you want the ledge, you want the ledge. Like right here, there's a bit of a drop off. You know, they're really important. Wolves, everyone fishes off the wharf, what do they do? They cast out as far as they can. The best spot for the brim is right below you. You see all the blokes in the boats, they're casting in towards you. Don't cast out there, cast right below. Weed beds, whiting, everything loves weed beds. So if you can get a pair of Polaroid sunnies and see the water, use it. But there's one more thing, and what's that? Tides. For the life of me that don't know, but fish love the tides. It, they're critical, yeah. they are critical. So when you go fishing, it's not just dawn and dusk, you know, everyone goes early, which is really important, I suppose, when in popular areas, you know, if it's a popular area, go early. But you're tied, all the fish in every estuary up and down New South Wales 
their whole lives are revolving around the tide. So rising tide, the brim come up on the flats, the winding are up on the flats, the dropping tide, where are the flatties? Sitting down there. Sitting right on those edges. They're sitting there waiting because all the bait's going back to them. So on a run out tide, so you're right, you're planning, going fishing tomorrow, you look in the morning, you got a run out tide, so you're gonna get flatties on those edges on the sandbanks, you know, just where it's all dropping down, little gutter, they're sitting there because all the bait is funneled back in through there. You know, on a rising tide, the brim are gonna be up on these flats behind us. So it's really important that you utilize and, and just read the tides. Don't just go fishing, maximize it to work with the tides. And again, go back and see your local tackle shop because they'll go, oh, the brim are up on the flats of the tide, you know, the white are moving around. Oh, the flathead have been a bit quiet. These are really important yeah. parts to help you catch fish. You know what we need to do next? Catch one. We need to bait up and catch a fish. <laughs> so this is how you put a pilchard on, nice and simple. Now, when it comes to reading baits, you need to apply a bit of finesse just to make it so it sits right. This is how I cut my pilchards. So we get the tail off, stop it so that it stops it from spinning, and we're gonna cut him straight down the middle here. Cut him straight in half. There we go. And we're gonna use the top for a bit of burly. All right, so we're gonna hook him straight through the back there. Get that through. There we go. So it hooks in like nicely like that. Then we're gonna pull it through, and we're gonna turn it back up here so now what you do, you're going to pin it through sort of the middle area, pin it up and through. So it sits kind of like that. The next part is looking where to cast. Now we know there's a bit of structure there and there's also a drop off, so it's the perfect spot for fish to sit. Now we're just going to cast straight out to it. So now we wait, while we wait for a bite, we've got a bit of leftover bread here. We're just going to use it as a bit of burly to see if we can't entice a few fish up. The burley's worked, we've seen a few fish around, now it's just time to get a bite. No, oh, there's one there, so all you need to do is circle it, just lift slightly. Now I've hooked him there, there we go. It's pretty well timed. <laughs> now you do, all, you, all you have to do, don't need to strike at all with these circle hooks. Just lift the rod and let the fish do the rest and there is a great Sydney Harbour brim. There we go. And there he is. Simple and easy. All right, now, I want to let him go quickly, so we're going to get the hook out. There we go. I'm going to lean the rod down. All right, now that I've shown him, let's let the old man catch one. We've been burling up. Started with the brim, whoop, got a bite. So he told you it wouldn't take that long. And as you can see there, if you just watch, if you can see the tip of the rod, see it just bouncing there? Now, what you do, is when you get a fish on, I normally like to drop the rod tip like that, and then just lift. Yep, was a bit nervous there for a minute. It's not a brim. And the important thing is when you fight fish, is you just want to bring them in nice and steady and keep that rod loaded the same the whole way through. What do you reckon? I'm going for a flatty at the rate we're going here, Coops. It's Defty acting like a flathead. It's a little flatty. Now flathead are a great eating fish, but they've also got a couple of spines on them, so you just need to be really careful a little bit tight, Whoop, no he's not that tight. Oh he's gonna sit. You can see that circle look perfectly pinned there in the corner. And with this fish here, he's absolutely sitting, he's just about to go again. They never sit like that. He's sitting there perfectly. And you've gotta be careful too, if you pan around, we've got a little mate here, who's, we're gonna let this guy go obviously, but with this little mate there, he might not be so good. Well, how good is that? We picked a spot right in the middle of Sydney. And we caught fish. I caught fish. I caught a fish. With the help of me. Yep, I'm <laughs> impressed. If I can catch fish, that shows how easy it is. So remember, select the spot, you know, pick the structure, remember the tides? Yep. And just take the family and go fishing. It's easy, it's all up and down the coast. We did Sydney Harbour, but you can do it anywhere. Anywhere. 
And you know the best part? I reckon that's really important. Apart from no, you've got to know all the rules and regulations because they're for the fish to make it better, is make sure you clean up, make it better. So always enhance it. So if you go down, there's a bit of rubbish there, take it home. And of course, take all your rubbish. So next time you go fishing, it'll even be better. Oh yeah. Thanks, Al, that was fantastic. Now none of us have any excuses for not being able to catch at least a few fish in our local estuaries. While you were away, I didn't catch any more yellow belly. Maybe I should have kept that first one that I got. But now it's time for me to tell you a bit more about those prizes I've been going on about and how you can win one. Remember, we've got 50 lure packs and 100 kids rod and reel outfits to give away. And all you have to do to be in the running to win one is make a comment under this video telling us the bag limit and minimum legal length for either golden perch or yellow belly or brim in New South Wales. You can tell us both if you want to, but also don't forget to tell us whether you want one of the lure packs or a kid's rod and reel. That's really important. Ooh, that might have been another bite. Well, I reckon I've got about enough worm left on there for one more cast. So I'm gonna throw my line out again. And I really hope that you and your family and your friends take advantage of Gone Fishing Day this Sunday, the 18th of October, to throw a line in yourself wherever you are in the state. But don't forget, first of all, drop into your local tackle shop for all that good advice and the gear that you'll need. And the other thing not to forget is that when you go home at the end of the day, please pick up all your rubbish and litter. And if you see something that someone else has left, pick that up as well. I hope you've enjoyed this little video presentation and that it's given you some ideas to improve your own fishing. It's been brought to you by Fish for Life and the Recreational Fishing Trusts. And it's a great example of our fishing fees at work for us. All right, until next time, this is Starlo wishing you tight lines. Go get them. Perfect.